Good morning, everybody. We are back to our Musar Sefer here on time for Elul. We're learning the Sefer called Mirror to Adorn Your Soul. And this Sefer is by Moshe Barikar Ashkenazi, telling us how to become better people. A lot of the things that he says in the 16th century are as relevant as they were then, they're relevant today. We spoke yesterday about the fact that a person uh, loves the Kaddish Baruch a person who loves the Kaddish Baruch accepts everything with love. Even though it may be difficult, it may be heavy, but if you love the one who actually commands you to do the mitzvahs, then you love the mitzvahs too. Now we're going to deal with a different issue, and we're going to start with the actual real main part of the Sefer, the body of the Sefer, the crux of the matter, and these are the 12 tribes. Now each one of them represents one of the good midas that we should all uh, acquire. Says the Sefer, Elam Yudves Midos Toivos. I'm here with a cursor also. Elam Yudves Midos Toivos, Amlichas Asodom Leganeden. These are the 12 good characteristics that lead a person in the right path to Ganeden. That's what we came to this world for, to go to Ganeden. Yeah, we're all old enough here in this room to know that life goes by quickly and we are on our way somewhere, somewhere bigger and better. This room is just a very temporary place. On those things, on, on similar, the Pasuk says, Yeah, this is a Pasuk that's not in last week's Pasha Re'e. This is a Pasuk in towards the end of Dvorim. Look, I placed in front of you the good, the life. Gan Eden Toiv, Gan Eden is called a good place. Shenema Marav Tufcha Shotzefan Tudorecho. And here comes the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reuven. Reuven Midas Anovo. Reuven is a Mida of Anovo. Reuven is the first tribe. And Anovo, humility, is the most, by far, by far, by far, the most important Mida of all. And I'm going to explain why. Mida Zuhi Shoyosh Vaschol Lechol Midas Atoivois. This Mida is the root and the beginning to all other good Midas. Why is that? We're going to see soon. Yeah, Rav Barikar Ashkenazi follows the opinion of the Rambam that when it comes to an over, the person has to go to an extreme. Usually a person has to choose the middle path, the golden path, and be somewhere in the middle. But when it comes to an over, a person has to learn, and it's not not easy. A person has to go to the extreme and be extremely humble. If you're scared, you'll be too humble, don't worry. Your Tzahara will try and uh, balance you anyways. So as far as you're concerned, try and do your best to just stay as humble as you can, which is which is hard work. That's what Chazal said in Pirkei Ovois, Me'oid, Me'oid Heveish Fal Ruach. Why did they repeat the word Me'oid twice? You should have a very, very low Ruach, low spirit, why does he have to say me'oid me'oid? Yeah, this is a mission and office. This is not a newspaper. Why does he repeat the word me'oid twice? Yeah, that is because you have to be extra double on of and humble. You also have to be humble in two different ways, as we're going to see soon. Me'oid me'oid relates to two types of anova. You have to be on of in front of a Kodesh Baruch Hu and relating between you and Hashem, the way you relate to your creator, and also the way you relate to your peers, the way you relate to the environment, you also have to be an on of. And both of them are different things and are difficult. Ika anova, the main part of anova, tzorich odem l'achniyoy l'fnei Kodesh Baruch Hu. The main part of anova is that the person has to be submissive and know that he's small and he's kanua, is, you know, like submissive and small in front of the Shborchu. And when you're still young, when you're still powerful, you should do tshuva from your averus, and that also comes from anova. A person who says, you know, I don't want Elul, I don't want to feel guilty, I'm okay with the way I am, I'm basically a good person. These are all ways, these, this kind of talk only comes from Gaiva. It comes from lack of anova. When a person says, I'm absolutely fine and everything you do is okay, that is Gaiva. He's not going to get anywhere. He's not going to grow. He's not going to become a better person because he is stuck where he is and he's happy about it. 
And that is not, not the way to go on. You're never, you're never going to become better. And you're not going to do, not going to do tshuva. By the way, he mentions dafka be'koyach. When a person does tshuva when he's old and cannot sin anymore, that's not such a big chokhmah, the Rambam says. Anyhow, you can't sin, so you regret the things you did, knowing that anyway you're out of the story, right, in certain areas in life. Or you are scared of death because you are, you know, in Hebrew we say, you're beginning to smell the ground from the other direction you realize that your days are numbered and you say, okay, now it's time to do tshuva. That's also accepted and very nice, but when a person still has the koyach, the power to do a virus, and he regrets because that's his own choice, he chooses to be an onov. He chooses to be onov, on what's onov, onov and oni are similar, poor. A poor person is usually more humble than the rich person who's usually more uh, arrogant. That's what Shlomo Melech says, ashir yane azot. So too, when you are still powerful and you choose to even make yourself poor, make yourself honor, that's great. That you're doing something unbelievably choshuv and beautiful and dear in the eyes of Hashem. The Yashpil Atzma Gamken Keneged Kol Odom. And also, not just in relating to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, many people would say, okay, with a Kodesh Baruch Hu, I'm an honor. Akshbach is greater than me, but my next door neighbor, huh, I'm greater than him, I'm better than him. He's going to tell me what to do. He has the chutzpah to approach me like that, not to give me COVID. Who is he, Bechlau? The chokhmah is to be mashpil keneged kol odom, keoni keoshil, whether the person is poor or rich. Yeah, you have to forgive, even if people insult you, be forgiving. That's a big avoider here. That's a novo. Sel mad Ruven. You should learn this from Ruven. What's the connection to Ruven? She also tshuva al chilul yitzui oviv beod shoyo bachu. Ruven did the avera of whatever he did with Bilha. Either he changed the bed. Some say actually really sinned, but whatever Ruven did, it was some kind of sin, and he did tshuva even though he was young. He was young and he could have said, you know, I'm young and maybe I want to sin again. Maybe it wasn't my fault. He can find all kinds of excuses. Usually, by the way, we connect this mitzvah to Yehuda. We all know the story about Yehuda and Tomor, but we forget that Reuven also did tshuva on a similar avera. Look what else happened with Reuven. Reuven is the one who actually suffered the most from Yosef when Yosef besmirched him and his brothers, so to speak, when he spoke Lashon Hora to Yaakov about them. Why? Because Reuven was supposed to be the Bechol, the firstborn. And Yosef was the one who Kielu usurped him, and he was the one who wanted to be the Bechol, to be the Melech, with all these dreams and all that. Yosef was really threatening Reuven in hierarchy more than anybody else. And look what happened. Reuven was the one, Reuven and Yehuda, Reuven was the main one who wanted to save him from his brothers. So interestingly enough, Reuben was number one target of Yosef, so to speak. Reuben was the one actually wanted to help him. That shows tremendous level of anova, and that was a beautiful meet of Reuben, which we should all encompass. I want to just say one more thing before we finish, although we may continue this tomorrow, and that is that anova is not just in front of Hashem and in the, in the people, it's Another something deeper, and this is very, very important to know today, today in 2021, not just today, everybody thinks that they're smart and everybody, a lot of people have questions about Yiddishkeit, legitimate questions. You have questions that don't understand this part of Torah, doesn't sit with me right, it doesn't sit with my... Uh, with my moral system, with my value system, you know, I don't understand this mitzvah, how could it be, it looks so cruel or so so outdated. So I'll give you a moshe. Let's say somebody here, and you know that I all appreciate you very much, and somebody here will tell me that in order to get out of corona, you have to jump uh, five times and go like this, I don't know, do something crazy. So I would say, okay, you're a nice guy, but uh, I don't have to be macabre this crazy idea of jumping five times in order not to contract corona, right? But let's say the person who says this funny thing to me is a very, very big professor, which I appreciate very much, who saved my daughter's life or something like that, and he tells me that. He tells me something that sounds crazy, not super crazy, but rather crazy, and so then I would say, well, I don't understand, but this great professor who's a researcher and number one, if he says that, must be there's something to it. Why? Because Klappi, you, I don't feel such a novel. I'm sorry, yeah, but Klappi, the great professor, I feel a novel. Yeah, when people question Yiddishkeit too much, and unfortunately we see this uh, uh, pandemic, pandemic of people leaving Yiddishkeit, many times they have questions. Those questions, where are they coming from? Question is very good when you have questions. The question is, what is your starting point? What is your, what is your, where, where are you coming from? Are you coming from, I, I, I don't understand Yiddishkeit. I am great. I'm smart, and I don't think I'm the best or the smartest, but I'm pretty smart, and I have my values already. And when this and that says so on the Chumash, it doesn't sit right with me, and therefore I reject it. 
That is like Kavanava. You don't understand that Kodesh Bochu is greater, and all the tens of thousands of Rabonim who gave us the Messiah are smarter than you at the age of 15? Really? That is tremendous like Kavanava. And that's what's going on in the street nowadays. Everybody thinks that they're so smart and they question things in a very outright, in a very in your face way. If you ask the same question with another, like, I don't understand it. I don't understand a Kodesh Baruch. Well, obviously, I don't because he's a Kodesh Baruch. And I mean, then I'm going to search and I'm going to look and I'm going to find the answers eventually. And I'm going to be stronger because I have the Anov and the ability to have humility. Bezal Hashem, we should all get our questions right, our answers right, our attitude right, and we should all be able to do tshuva now in Elul and be better people. Thank you very much. What about? Yeah. Uh, uh, just a little question on, 